Now, I'd like you to turn with me to the Word of God this morning, and we're turning to Mark's Gospel, chapter 2. The Gospel of Mark, please, and we're in chapter 2. It's a well-known portion from the Word of God. It's a well-read portion of Scripture. And there are three words within this passage, three words that the Lord has led in my heart. But verse number 1 we read, And again he entered the Lord Jesus into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much was as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when, they had, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easy to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing upon the reading of his own precious truth. Countless of times as you read through Scripture, you will find many great accomplishments for God were achieved not by the majority, but by the minority. Great accomplishments for God were achieved not by a majority, but by a minority. First Kings chapter 18, through one man, a national repentance fell upon the nation. That one man, Elijah, God through one man, brought about a national repentance. And I'll tell you this, if there's anything Britain needs today, it's a national repentance and a turning back to God. Then in the book of Judges, you read about a man called Gideon, Judges chapter 7. You remember verse 12, we read the Midianites and the Amalekites, they were like grasshoppers. And it says, for multitude, camels without number. And it says, and as the sand by the seashore for multitude. But you know, Gideon, one man along with 300, facing that great company of people, won a great battle that day, won and saw a great accomplishment for God. It wasn't the majority, it was the minority. Others like David proves to us God can use men, God can use women, that's if they make themselves available. You know, dear child of God this morning, God's not looking out for your availability. Sorry, He's not looking out for your ability. You may say to me this morning, George, I couldn't do what you do. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do the other thing. Well, listen, God's not looking out for your ability, but He's looking out for your availability. I remember before I came as the pastor here, I'll tell you the truth. I says, there's no way I can do this. I haven't the ability to do it. And God spoke to me one day. It's not your ability I need. It's your availability to accomplish my purpose through your life. 
Great a great accomplishments for God is often carried out by the minority. The greatest accomplishment any believer can do for God this morning, above exalting His name, of course, sorry, other than exalting His name and worshiping Him, which is more above all things. But one of the greatest accomplishments a believer can do with their life is to bring others to Christ. To bring someone to Christ, child of God, is your duty, and it's mine. To bring others to Christ this morning, that's our part. To seek others for Christ, to bring others to Christ, it's our part. Ah, but the saving of these people, that's the Lord's part, and that's the Lord's business. And I wonder this morning, dear child of God, when was the last time you sought someone out for Christ? When was the last time you brought Christ to someone, you spoke to someone of the Lord Jesus? You don't need to be a pastor or a preacher. There was a young couple who lived in the Red Hills outside Hillsborough, their names was Harold and Florence Cobb. Florence Cobb was at home one day, and the coal man came and rapped the door, and would you like any coal today, Mrs. Cobb? And of course, she ordered coal. But the coal man told her about the Lord Jesus, and every day he appeared, he spoke to her about the Lord. One day he came again, and Florence answered the door, and he spoke to her again, and he says, excuse me, I need time on my own. What happened, Florence couldn't take any more. She was under such conviction. And she went out to the back of the garage where there's a wee piece of carpet, and there she knelt down, and she gave her heart to the Lord Jesus because someone brought Christ to her. The coal man landed another day, and, and she says, Here, you speak to Harold today. And he spoke to Harold and says, Harold, I would like you to come with me to a gospel meeting. Will you come? He says, oh, well. And he brought him to Lurgan Baptist Church, and under the faithful preaching of Pastor Willie Mullen, Harold gave his life to the Lord. Harold and Florence both came to the Lord because someone, the coal man, brought them to Christ. It was a great ministry because Harold was a police inspector and he was killed in February of 1977. Now listen, child of God, in our passage this morning, here's my text. Born of four. That's it. Born of four. And I want you to look at these four this morning, and God wants to speak on these faithful four. Faithful four. There were just four people who brought a man to Christ, and God wants us to see a number of things about these faithful four. And I wonder, do you and I possess these things? You see, in this, these four this morning, this faithful four, the first thing I could see this morning, the virtue of their vision. These four this morning, they had a vision for this poor man this morning. You see, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, and I believe that's a problem today. In many pulpits, there's no vision. And if there's no vision in the pulpit, then there's no vision in the pew. But these four possess this morning the vision, the virtue of vision. And I want you to see 
something else this morning. Here's a home where the Lord Jesus was, this building, and, and the building was packed. The crowd was there. Christ was there, and, and, and they couldn't get near the door. The crowd overflowed onto the street. But here's the thing. This crowd was eager to hear Christ. They were there to hear His Word. And even though they were eager to hear the Word of God, yet they were ignorant of the man's need, perhaps, that lay beyond them. I'm sure perhaps maybe some in the house that day, in the home that day, says, you know, there's a poor man out there. What he needs to do is to hear Christ. What he needs to do is to see Christ. What he needs to do is to meet Christ. And you know, there's many of us like that this morning. Yes, we know they need Christ. They need to see Christ. They need to hear Christ. They need to come to Christ. Ah, but there's more than just having that vision. We need to have the vision this morning to do something about it. Oh, I we need to have the vision to do something about it. You see, child of God, this morning, listen. This morning, I believe, we're like the disciples. The Lord Jesus had to say to the disciples, Say not there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. He says, Look unto the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. The problem was it was staring them in the face, and they couldn't see it. But these faithful four this morning, they had the virtue of vision. Wonder this morning, do you have it? They saw this man as he was. Do you see, if you see a drunk man in the street, he's not a drunkard. Do you know what he is? He's a man that needs Christ. Go you for a walk along the river, river walk. Some of you know where it is there. And there's young people there high on drugs on a Saturday night. And they're not druggies. I'll tell you what they are. They are young people that needs Christ. And we should never condemn such people as Christians. It's our duty. And it's our calling to bring Christ to those people. The virtue of their vision. I want you to notice, secondly, in this passage this morning, there's the blessing of burden. They had a blessing of burden. You see, this virtue of vision that they had led to the great burden that they had in going to this man where he was. They saw they saw that if this man is ever going to be healed, if he's ever going to have anything done for him, it's no use leaving him out in the street there. We need to go out and to bring him in. He's not going to hear the word if we are stuck in here. He says, we need to go out and bring him in. wonder this morning, are you burdened for the loss? Are you burdened this morning for a, for a lost son or a lost daughter or a lost mother or a lost father? Well, I'll tell you, if you're properly burdened this morning, you'll do something about it. And I'll tell you one of the things that you'll do about it. You pray for them. And if a man or a woman's really burdened, you yeah, at the prayer meeting on Thursday evening. People say, Ah, oh, but I can pray at home. Well, in Acts chapter 12, when Peter was in the prison, they all came together to pray for Peter. And listen, child of God, this morning, every one of us should be here to gather on a Thursday evening praying at the prayer meeting. 
Two Thursday nights sticks out in my memory. One Thursday night was the night Maud Kells was here. And you couldn't have got a seat hardly in that annex. And the second Thursday night was not so very long ago when our young people were in there giving our report and bless them. And we as a fellowship should be proud of them. And you could hardly got a seat in there. But it's sad when we make the effort in making our way out on the Thursday night on special nights. And if you only come out on special nights, I'm telling you, it's the wrong reason for being out. That annex in there on a Thursday night should be packed every week with burdened souls for the burden of the lost. It's too late to be burdened when you're looking at them in the coffin, love. It should be the burden for our loved ones that should drive us into that annex on a Thursday night seeking God's face for God to move. Oh, but if there's a business meeting here, you'll be out all right. Or some special night, some special speaker, boys will get there that night. But what about coming out every night with a burden on your heart for your unsaved loved ones? Because you should be out. I think today Christians come to some meetings to be entertained, but they don't come with a burden for the lost. And I'm saying this in love this morning. These four, they were blessed with a burden. I say, child of God, if you have no burden for a lost soul, get on your knees and ask the Lord to give you one. You fathers are here this morning. Now you have young children coming up, and you should be, you should be at the prayer meeting praying for your children. And those of you who are involved in the Lord's work here, you should be in here on a Thursday night praying for the wee class that you're teaching. And I'll tell you something else, son. There's some of you here this morning, and you're not here out on a Sunday night. And you should be here. You say to me, well, George, I can't get anybody out on a Sunday night. Sunday night, I can't get people out. Well, I'll tell you this. There's nothing in Scripture that tells me that I can't preach the gospel on a Sunday morning. If you can get somebody out on a Sunday morning, I'll happily preach the gospel on a Sunday morning. But listen, we have to go out as the Lord Jesus instructs us to and to compel them to come in. Child of God, have you a real burden for the lost this morning? These faithful four had a burden. James McQuilkin was one man who had a burden for his Sunday school class. He spoke to three other men who taught Sunday school. And he says, well, we'll not meet each week for prayer, that the Lord would bless. James McQuilkin, Jeremiah McNeely, John Wallace, Robert Kalil met for prayer to seek God's blessing upon their Sunday school. They weren't in that schoolhouse in Kells to pray for a revival. No, no, no. They weren't there praying for revival. They were there praying for their Sunday school class. And God blessed their Sunday school class. And God's blessing spilled from the Sunday school class. God's blessing spilled into the town and neighbourings of County Antrim, and it spilled out right across Northern Ireland into Donegal, into County Monaghan. 
what was known as the 1859 revival began with four men who had a burden to pray for their Sunday school. See, these faithful four had a virtue of vision. Do you see the virtue of their vision? They saw the man. Do you see the blessing of burden that brought them through the man? And here's a wee message now the Lord wants me to say to us in leadership. This goes for me. And it goes for William John. And it goes for all the diaconate. If the spiritual leadership of a church... If we do not have a profound burden for the lost, then how can we expect the average member or adherent to have a burden? It's not all about me preaching the gospel. And you know me now almost four years completed here, and I preach the gospel as simply as I can and as clearly as I can. Ah, but it's not just down to me to preach the gospel. It's about people with a vision and a burden this morning that brings people in. Thirdly, I want you to notice the faith that was firm. You know, these four men, yes, it was the vision that saw the man there. It was the burden that they that had for him that brought him there. Ah, but it was the faith that was firm this morning that brought him to Christ. Why? Because they knew rightly that the Lord Jesus was able to do for him what nobody else could do. Do you know what their faith didn't say? Their faith didn't say, ah, there's no point, he's been like that there for years, let him lay there. Their faith didn't tell them that. I'll tell you what didn't happen, what did not happen, I'll tell you what did not happen. That man's condition did not overrule their faith. You marked that this morning. That man's condition did not overrule their faith, but their faith overruled that man's condition. Let me say something this morning, child of God. There's no hopeless cases for Christ. The problem is, or the question is, have we the vision? Have we the burden? Have we the faith? Because these faithful four had it. And it was only four. Oh, that sinners would lay heavy on our hearts this morning. If only we could see the reality and the pearl and the eternal fate of lost sinners. And if you're in this meeting this morning and you're not saved, I'll tell you, it's not religion you need, dear, or it's not religion you need, sir. You need Christ this morning. You're on the road. That's leading to a Christless hell. And as your pastor, and more so as your friend, I have to warn you, but I have to tell you of one who is mighty to save. And this evening, I'm going to preach on the great message, life more abundant in Jesus. Because I'll tell you this, I'm a living proof. I never knew life until the day I knew Christ. But these faithful four, do you see the, virgin, the, the virtue of their vision? Do you see the blessing of the burden that they had? Do you see the firmness of their faith? I'm, quiet, I'm going to quit now on this last point. Do you see the depth of their determination? They'll come to the house and they can neither get in nor see hardly the sight of the door nor nothing. And their determination 
was to get this man to Christ at all costs. But do you know what they needed? They needed a breakthrough. Somewhere, somehow, they needed to break through. Maybe that's what you need this morning, child of God. You've been trying for years, maybe a son or a daughter, I don't know. Here's how you break through. Stay on your knees and pray. You know why there's very little happening today in churches across our land? It's not that we're lacking in gospel preachers. I think we're tripping over. I'll tell you what the church is lacking today. Prayer warriors. Because it's the people who take the fight to the Lord on their knees in prayer. It's them that see a work done. Since I came to Kilkeel, I found out a number of things. And this was one of them. Prayer warriors. There's a number of homes I went into and I could see a pile of my prayer letters sitting. And today, they're in the presence of the Lord. And when a pastor or an evangelist loses their prayer warrior who's behind them really in prayer, you can feel it. It's never the preacher that wins the breakthrough. It's the people that stays on their knees and prays the thing through. Did you notice, if you want to finish, did you notice in verse number 12, and immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw it in this fashion. Boys, the crowd were rejoicing, enjoying the blessing, but it was the four that made it happen. It was the four that made it happen. Are you burdened to make it happen? Have you a vision this morning? Have you a burden this morning? Have you a faith this morning? A determination to bring Christ to the lost in Kilkeel. Things happen when God's people grasp the vision. Things happen when God's people are burdened. Things happen when God's people believe. Things happen when God's people are determined. Little did these four men know when they brought this man to Christ and the Lord wonderfully saved him and cleansed him and healed him. But down through the years and the ages to follow, those four men brought not only that man to Christ, but they brought hundreds to Christ. For many of an evangelist, including myself, has preached on this and saw people won for Christ. Tell me this. Have you a burden for the lost this morning? Have you a vision to seek out, to bring others to the Savior, and to meet with us on a Thursday night to pray in these dark, 
closing days of grace will need to be together pray. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer just now. Our Father in heaven, we do thank Thee that from Thy word Thou shalt lead and guide us each day. And today You have showed me and You have showed everybody, Lord, the great need of the day and the need of the hour to go out after souls and to seek the lost for Thee and tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Give us a burden, we pray. Give us a faith, we pray. Give us a determination, we pray. Give us, Lord, a vision. Oh, Lord, give us a vision. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.